Okay, uh, I think it'll be easier if we look at the entire picture. So we started with these parental initials, parental initials, then they divided periclinally and we got the jacket initial and the archosporeal cells below. Okay, then these jacket initials, they are dividing. You can see they are dividing to cover the sporogenous cells. Now these archosporeal cells, they will divide to form the primary sporogenous cells. Okay, then it keeps on redividing to increase in number. Do you see? Uh, uh, these few, these few are the primary sporogenous cells. Okay, they divide and then they will rest for some time. Okay, after they divide, uh, how do I, how do I say? Um, uh, there are a group of cells, no, even in humans, when you were a baby, when you were an embryo, there were some sporogenous cells which were primary, okay? So this is your zygotes, this is from the father, your gene scheme and from your mother, no, the egg, the N and N. Then you, uh, um, there was a fusion and then you became a zygote, right, a 2N. Now this zygote has all the information but only one copy. Now what happens, this zygote will divide a few times and we will get maybe, uh, let's say four, we stop at four, let's say there are four, okay. And these are your primary sporogenous cells. Now why they divide, why they divide exactly like the zygote, like the 2N, is because so that when you became a human, you will not have any defect, okay. Now these, these cells, let's say these primary sporogenous cells, Let's say all here in this cell, everything information is there. Which part will form your eye, which part will form your leg, your nose, your arms. It has all the information. Similarly with the rest of the three, all the three. Okay. Then they will rest for some time, collect all the, uh, what to say, food and nutrients and materials. It will rest. Then only it will start to divide Quickly, very quickly the baby will grow after three months. Have you realized? Your mommy's belly never grew, no, be before three. Then suddenly after three months it used to grow so fast. Then we reach this stage, this progenous cell stage. It's because, uh, let's say, in this cell, no? Let's say this is cell one, this is two, this is three, this is four. Now, after the rest stage, the cell one, no? What, what happens is that from the gene, the gene says, hey cell 1, you become the brain, the head and the face. Then cell 1, okay, I will divide, divide, divide. Oh, four, let me clear it. So, okay, there was 1, 2, 3, 4, no, 1, 2, 3, 4. Then the gene said, you cell 1, divide and become head. So it divides so many times, no? 1, it keeps on dividing, 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 dividing to become, finally form the head of the baby. Then the gene said, A hey, cell 2, you become the arms and legs. So it'll divide, 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 divide till we get the arms and the leg of the baby. Okay. Then cell number 3 says, you divide and form the lungs and organs. So the lungs form, the heart form, no? Then the cell number 4, the primary sporogenous cell number 4 says, the gene says, you divide and form the intestine. Okay, so you understand now why we have this primary sporogenous cell so that there is no information lost. Okay, if this one fail, okay, this, this cell, it failed, some genetic defect happened, the other three are still there to, to perform. Let's say this one, this one, this head, no, one, two, three, four, this, this head, the cell, it damage, no? Then the, gen the genes are still there in cell 2, okay? Simply the cell 2 will divide into 2 and then this one will become head and the rest will perform its normal function, okay? Okay, so these primary sporogenous cells, they are the few, okay? And then after the rest period, they'll divide so much and they will form a sporogenous mass of cells, okay? These cells. Okay, again, again, they will divide and become even more in number. 
and then this porogenous cell will finally form your spore mother cells okay and then those spore mother cell will divide to form spores okay okay so let's look at the okay let's look at the okay um where did we stop okay uh, the innermost layer of the sporangial wall function as tapetal tissue. Okay, this one always comes in multiple choice. No, for your competitive exam, they'll ask you what is tapetum. Simply, it is the nourishment tissue. Okay, for the zygote. No, uh, just like uh, uh, in human, we have placenta. No, in uh, in plants, there is no such thing as placenta. It is your tapetum. Okay, it it acts like a placenta. It sends the food from the surrounding leaf. Okay. It is your nourishing tissue. Okay. Nourishment food. It will send to those sporo, uh, sporogene cells. Okay. Okay. So, the sporogenous tissue undergoes repeated mitotic. Here it's mitosis. Okay. Mitotic division and gives rise to the spore mother cells. Okay. Like as I said, these porogenous cells, okay, these porogenous cells, they will divide by mitosis. This is all 2N, okay, this is 2N. This is all 2N. These porogenous cells, they have divide and they will give rise to the spore mother cell, SMC. I'm just writing in short, no, spore mother cells. They will divide again to form the spore, spore mother cell. Okay, so I hope it's clear. Okay, so as the sporangium matures, okay, then what happens? The spore mother cell will separate from each other and then they will undergo meiotic division okay so up till now we started from the uh, what is that uh, archaeosporial initial jacket initial then we got the sporogenous tissue right everything that happened was mitosis yeah? from 1 to 2 2 to 4 now then after they has reached the stage of spore mother cell after it has reached spore mother cell stage, finally, after so long, it will finally undergo meiosis. Okay, meiosis is what? It is a reduction division. No, because from 2N we will get N. And then how many should we get? We will get, we'll get spore tetrads. Okay, spore tetrads is because when meiosis happens, no, you get four cells. So, 4 is what? Tetrad? No. Okay. So, now what is the shape of these spores? If you look at them in the microscope, when we do uh, practicals, no? You will see very clearly that they are triangular in shape and it has a ridge like this. Tri radiate ridge means a ridge, okay, or a, what do you say? What do you call a ridge? Um, sort of a drain, I guess, which goes in three three uh, directions. Okay, so tri radiate ridge. Okay, and the ridge is present on the inner inner face. <coughs> okay, now I think I had introduced to you the term homosporous. No, uh, I had told you that Salajinella. It has two types of spores. One is a small and one is the large. Okay, megaspore and mini, uh, microspore. Okay, but lycopodium, it has only one type of spore. That is those triangular shape one. No, with the tri radiate ridge. Okay. It's so difficult to draw. Okay, it has this ridge like this. Okay. And so lycopodium is homosporous. It produces spores of equal size and shape. Okay. 
the spores are yellow in color when they mature. You will see when you see in the in the microscope. No, it's very clearly that they are yellow color and uh, try radiate. The, if you look at the wall, if you can cut, but we don't cut now because it's very difficult to cut. If you cut the spore wall, you will notice that there are two layers. That is the inner wall called as in time. I for inner. Okay, inner, in time. All right. And the outer wall, which is known as exile. Okay. Out means X. <laughs> out. Your X is out. Okay. So the X sign will show, uh, um, will show ornamentation, and it varies with the species. Ornamentation means, uh, for example, hibiscus. No, if you look in the microscope, right, it has long. What to say? Not like that. If you look at the spore of hibiscus, no, you will see some sort of projections coming out. Okay. Then if you see the lycopodium, then if you see the different spores, they have hairs coming out. No? So they have different designs. Okay, the spores have different designs. Now look at this one. It is triangular in shape. No? It has this ridge. No? And then it has these ornamentations. No? It has sort of a net-like appearance. Okay? All right, so let's go to the next. Just look at the diagram of the spore. It's very easy. Now let's see how they can propagate themselves, okay? So uh, we'll look at the dehiscence of the sporangium, okay? So the major sporangium, remember this one? Oh, one minute. The leaf like this, no, like that. Yes. This is the sporophyll. This is the sporangium. It will split. It will open like this. Okay. It will split along a vertical line of weakness. Okay. Uh, because uh, remember, the the sporogenous tissues, the sporogenous cells kept dividing. No, and they form sporogenous tissues. Right. Then not only did they divide and form big mass, but now they are undergoing meiosis. So from one, they will have four. So isn't it growing bigger and bigger in size as it's dividing the spores? So obviously, when you keep blowing a balloon, wouldn't it split? Wouldn't it burst? Exactly like that. Okay. So why did this sporangium split? It's because of the Stress and the strain that is caused by the drying of the sporangial cells, okay? Because when meiosis happens, no? A lot of water is absorbed by those spores, no? A lot of activity is happening. Just like you, if you study a lot, no? You feel very hungry, you feel very thirsty, okay? So what happens when this stress and strain is so high? Finally, it will crack and the spore mass will just explode out okay it will project out of the open slit and it will be sent to different places by the air okay by the air currents